This here is Jess. From the time she was six months old, she's had no ability in her legs and only very limited ability in her arms. This means that even for tasks that we find simple, such as taking our own medication, scratching our eyebrow, or even wiping our bums after we go to the bathroom, these are all things that just requires a carer to help her do. But she's not the only one. There are 20,000 people with spinal cord injuries in Australia and over 3 million people around the world. To address this problem, I started to my robotics. We make iPhone-controlled robot arms for people with disabilities. In order to find out what they wanted, I went out and spoke with people with disabilities. They said they wanted something that's aesthetic, something that's discreet, and something that's functional. And so in terms of functionality, our robotic arm can be mounted onto a wheelchair, but also moved to a kitchen table bench, moved to a bedside table, mounted in the bathroom. And that means that when someone's sleeping, they can instruct their robotic arm to reach out even further to turn a light switch on or, on or off. Or they can get their robotic arm to lift the blanket up or down, depending on their, their body temperature. Or in the morning, they can have a carer put the robotic arm in the bathroom and program it to reach out, grab an electric shaver, put it to one side for a minute, put it to the other side for a minute, turn the tap on, rinse it under the tap, turn the tap off, and put it back. So that was our nice computer rendered version. Where are we now? This is the second prototype, which I finished making like a week ago. <laughs> And this is a video of our first prototype lifting up a 400 milliliter bottle of water. And as you can see, it can control that very easily, quite smoothly. In order to get the word out there about our product, I visited 63 different disability organizations and individuals to get their feedback. And also recently attended the ANSCOS conference here in Sydney, where I met all the people in the disability space through all those discussions, I found out our business model. Even though it's people with disabilities that will be using the product, it will be insurance agencies. I found two government grants that can pay for this arm. And organisations such as TAC, Lifetime Care, Enable New South Wales. I was also very fortunate to have met with the Department of Veteran Affairs about a month ago. They were really impressed with the arm and have invited me back to pitch to a, a table of people. And if that pitch goes well, <laughs> and if that pitch goes well it means that uh, my arm will be included on a list of registered products that people who have been, people who are funded by the Department of Affairs can apply for and receive. So that's like hundreds of uh, potential customers just from those discussions alone. And what will they be paying for, the robotic arm? support subscriptions, the various accessories, such as the mounts to go on the table, the bathroom, the wheelchair. And as our robot arm is iPhone controlled, we'll also be setting up an app store for developers to create apps for and to, to benefit from. In terms of the competition, I'm very happy that we actually do have competitors. There's a company in Canada and three in the Netherlands. But in terms of addressing functionality, discreteness, and aesthetics, we surpass all of them while being at a very competitive price range. We aim to do $500,000 in sales this year. I'm the CEO. This is my third company. Uh, my last organization, RoboGals, uh, we, we aim to get girls interested in engineering and technology, careers and tertiary studies. We have 17 chapters in Australia, the UK, the US and Japan and have taught 14,000 girls robotics. And for that, I was named the 2012 Young Australian of the Year. But I'm very fortunate to have a fantastic team of people around me who I work with on this project. In terms of our timeline, um, we've learned about the regulatory process. We have a provisional patent. Here we are at Tech 23. What a great day it is. <laughs> I'm off to the Consumer Electronics Show in January in Las Vegas, and we'll be shipping our first orders in May next year. In the future, there's scope for expansion as an assistive aid in SMEs for manufacturing. 
in the telepresence market for the growing elderly population and to help with housework. And we have over $220,000 in pre-orders. Thank you. <laughs>